here and now, here we are. This is Ahmed of Palestine and uh, Dr. Ibrahim, Abraham Weisfeld of the Jewish Socialist Bund and Ahmed of Palestine. Palestine exists now, doesn't it? It's Absolutely. about to be, Absolutely. It's about to be recognized even by the uh, United Nations, I believe. Well, uh, already uh, 143 countries out of 196 countries uh, passed a resolution at the General Assembly of recognizing, recognizing the state of Palestine, which I have a problem with it. But anyways, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. It's, a, it's a, a step in the right direction of recognizing the Palestinian people right on their land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, the uh, United States, uh, the Zionist state, and a few uh, banana republics voted against it. Whereas uh, <laughs> hypocritical Western uh, states, mostly, uh, they voted, they did not vote, they abstained. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're afraid <laughs> they're afraid to vote <laughs> yes they, they're, they're word they're word from uncle sam uh, for a question <laughs> yes <laughs> so-called yes. sovereign uh, uh most developed uh, uh states in the uh, in the world history they can't even decide on how to you know vote. what there's four there was four uh or five uh countries in europe voted for it Spain, uh -huh. oh, yes. uh, Norway, uh -huh. uh, I believe Sweden, I'm not sure, uh, Malta, uh -huh. and uh, Belgium. Oh, they Belgium. voted for, for recognition of the Palestinian state. But this resolution to become a, a resolution, it has to be voted and accepted by the UN Security Council. Yes. Uh, of course, the United States will usually veto such uh, resolutions. So what happens then? Well, you know, uh, the will of the United States cannot stop the will of the Palestinian people, nor the will of the people of the world. Hmm. They could veto as much as they want. They could, uh, you know, put uh, sticks in the wheel of history as much as they can. But the wheel of the history will continue moving forward eventually to uh, the establishment of back uh, re-establishment of the homeland of the Palestinian people. Um, I'm not too much really keen about the state as much as I keen on uh, the re-establishment of the homeland of the Palestinian people or all the Palestinian refugees who've been ethnically cleansed by the Zionists to turn back to Palestine. Yes, we've mentioned that before. The uh, plight of the Palestinian refugees, which now are, according to UNRWA, are registered at uh, the number of 5.7 million. That's the first yep. question. They're the most uh, urgent uh, matter next to Gaza uh, uh, to resolve. Yes. You know, Absolutely. any any so-called solution for mm -hmm. Palestine has to begin with the Palestinian refugees. Definitely. There, there, there's... Like to me, what is more important is whether it the state or is it the return of the refugees? Of course, the return of refugees has to be paramount to the establishment of the state because they're calling for a state on uh, one fifth of Palestine. It's the mm -hmm. West Bank Gaza Strip, whereas uh, the eastern part, the eastern part of Jerusalem, become a Palestinian capital, mm -hmm. which is this is total rubbish, you know. That's, yeah. uh, it's, it's not acceptable to many Palestinians. Okay, We yeah. want our homeland, all Palestine, from the river to the sea. Palestine mm -hmm. must be free. It should mm -hmm. be free. Yeah. Okay, And that doesn't mean, as a Zionist uh, and their uh, supporters uh, trying to make it look like it's a call for genocide of the, the Jewish people in Palestine. No, it's not. It's actually it's a, a freedom of the Palestinian and the Jews from the Zionist uh, fascist uh, in Palestine. Yes, we have to liberate the, even the Jewish people from Zionism. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Like, like the world uh, liberated the Germans from the Nazis. Hmm. And the world liberated uh, the white people from the apartheid system. We should the same thing uh, liberate uh, everybody 
Italy, including, of course, the Jewish people from the, the fascist, uh, I'll call them the 21st century Nazis, the mm -hmm. Zionists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the Zionists <clears throat> in Palestine, some of them are criminals. They're going to have to stand trial. Absolutely. There's no doubt in my mind, each and every one of them who committed a, a, a crime against the Palestinians has to stand trial. Uh, it's mm -hmm. it, it cannot be uh, uh, peace without justice. So no justice, no peace. Yes, so there's going to be justice to all these uh, uh, victims uh, being, uh, you know, uh, they, they lost their lives, they lost their livelihoods, they lost their loved ones by the Zionists. They have to stand trial and they have to be like Nuremberg uh, trials. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, the Zionists can't be allowed to get away with, you know, murder. You know, if the okay. Zionists, you know, thinks they can get away with murder, they're going to do it again. So in yeah, order to stop, you know, a civil war from happening, there has to be justice. Absolutely. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the Zionists who committed crimes, against humanity, crimes against the Palestinian people, they have to stand trial in a, in a, in a court of justice uh, mm. and according to the uh, international law. Yes. Uh, I wrote and, about and this in, uh, in, in the uh, constitutional uh, proposal that I wrote in the book uh, called The Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations. <clears throat> and I talked about, you know, how justice would be dispensed. And there, you, uh, also with respect to property rights, so you need a tribunal, a tripartite tribunal, a court, a special court with three judges, like they have with the Federal Court of Appeal here in Canada. Three judges, one, you know, an Israeli judge, you know, educated to be a judge, who should be a judge, you know, who's supposed to be able to think like a judge and not like a Zionist. A uh, <clears throat> Palestinian judge who was trained in uh, in law and uh, you know, law originated in the in the uh, <laughs> in the Western Orient. There, you know, the the first you know book of law was the Hammurabi Code, and then okay. there came you know the Ten Commandments, and then came you know all the other you know like Egyptian laws and everything like that. You know, so law is very much you know part of the uh, Semitic uh, Palestinian culture now. And a third judge, which can be an international judge or a judge that is agreed to by the first two judges. So you have three judges, you know, you can't have, you know, split decisions. And then they come to a consensus of opinion as to who the land belongs to in a given property rights, you know, when a Palestinian shows up, you know, with a title deed, you know, from the Ottoman Empire that predates, you know, any Zionist, you know, authorization to occupy the land. Well, it should be rather obvious, you know, to whom the land, that piece of land belongs to. And then in terms of uh, those families who can identify uh, the uh, Zionists, you know, who, who caused harm to their family, they have to be prosecuted. And if they don't want to accept the decision of the court, then their alternative is to accept exile. Okay. Well, I would I would accept. Uh, like, I would add to what you just said. Uh, a Jewish uh, uh, judge who is not Zionist has to be not Zionist. He cannot be a Zionist and judge because he's already he's already. Biased by being a Zionist, he's already about it. so, uh, and, and he has to be a Palestinian Jew, he cannot be a, a, a colonial uh, That's Jewish, right. yeah, uh, has to be an indigenous Palestinian Jewish person who been here in Palestine pre the 1917 British colonial, colonialism in Palestine, then a Palestinian judge and an international judge who is not European. I, I insist not a European it has to be from the global south. Yeah. Why you know we have to have, have that? Then we could really reach uh, the conclusion of of uh, who is uh, entitled to the land and who is entitled to property and who is entitled to everything. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I'm very impressed with the International Court of Justice. I listened to uh, the uh, Israel delegate lawyer trying to defend Israel this week. <laughs> it was pathetic, you know. You know, the guy, you know, like was saying, oh, well, we haven't had enough time, you know. Uh, you know, the court had told us, you know, we had to make a report, you know, by uh, Saturday, six o'clock. That's today. <laughs> Complaining, you know, that they had to make a report, you know, that they had to be accountable to the International Court of Justice because they don't want to be accountable to anybody. They just, you know, want to do whatever they want. 
and then international law, you know, they don't believe, you know, applies to them. Why? Because the rationale that they're giving is that they are uh, expressing or operating on the basis of national self-determination because they claim to be, you know, the vanguard of the Jewish liberation movement, but they aren't, you know? <laughs> you know, they, they passed the law saying that Israel was a Jewish nation state, which barely passed, first of all. Second of all, you know, that government was not elected by the Jewish people. You know, majority of the Jewish people don't even live there. <laughs> 7.4 uh, Jewish Americans, 7.2 uh, Jewish uh, people living in Palestine. You know, so not all the them majority? Jews, not all of them Jews. There's about one and a half million Russians and Ukrainians. At oh, least 50% yeah. of them are not even Jewish. They are Christian who went for to run away from Soviet Union then and Ukraine. They left poverty to live in, 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 in Israel. Uh, even now, some some of these Russians, they have their own church, churches in Tel Aviv and in Netanya. <laughs> <laughs> so when you talk about 7.2, no, there's not. Maybe 6 million, 6 oh, million yes. and a half who are Jewish Zionist colonists. Yes yeah. or not? Yeah. So the, yeah, yeah. The, the actual, actual a sizable majority of Jews live outside of uh, uh, colonial Palestine. Yeah, yeah. So to them, you know, being a Zionist is more important than being Jewish, you know, because, Absolutely. you know, these these Zionists who are originally and still are Christians, you know, in many respects, you know, they get a vote in the uh, elections, you know, for the government of the uh, Zionist state. But here, Jewish people, you know, the rest of the world in diaspora that we call it, you know, we're a diaspora nation. We don't have mm -hmm. a vote. Majority of the Jewish people don't have a vote, you know, for those uh for those yes. elections, you know, for that government. And yet, Netanyahu gets up at the United Nations and claims to be speaking on behalf of the Jewish people as a whole. Well, he's a lie. That's a lie. All the, the, the Zionists, they live all their life as liars. These people uh, lie as they breathe. Back yeah. to the, the, uh, the word for court, the Zionists have no merits to what they have, except to the deflection. They try to deflect the the you know the accusation against them of committing genocide by using all kind of tricks, but it's it turns out it comes out as pathetic, as laughable. Like everybody, mm. like I, I listened to it, I, I was laughing because this they have no argument whatsoever. Mm. They had since January twenty six to have a report. Yeah, you're talking about February. March, April, now May, and they said hey, we want till six o'clock on Saturday. What are you doing for four months? What were you doing? Four months. <laughs> yes, I remember <laughs> now. You reminded me, you know, because they were ordered by the court to report within a month. You know, yes, to uh, they didn't to follow the recommendations of the International Court of Justice to avoid you know, genocidal practices. Yes, they didn't. They should be actually, sanctioned they're... already. Yeah. It, they are actually gloating and boasting their soldiers via TikTok and uh, Instagram and other uh, social media showing their uh, actual deed of of genocide against the Palestinian people. Yeah. They show yeah. they showing it off even after the the ruling of the international court. Mm -hmm. They're showing that we still uh, we don't care about what the court says and what's the people opinion the world opinion say. Mm. We're still committing genocide, and they're doing it and saying yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Yeah, no, these people are, as I said before, and I, I, I believe uh, the Zionists are are a, a, a psychopathic cult mm -hmm. who don't th they think about themselves. They don't think what's going on around them. That's mm. uh, so when when they commit suicide, uh, they oh, sorry when they commit genocide against other people as a psychopath does or do is blaming the victim for yeah. his or her demise so mm. the Zionists they're doing this exact the same thing as a collective psychotic cult yes incredible it's so incredible yeah. how they've been brainwashed yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. it's 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 a it's a cult it starts from from uh, early age uh, of inflicting a trauma on the psyche of the child 
of the Holocaust and other programs that committed against the people, uh, the Jewish people in Europe, not in mm -hmm. the Arab world, mm -hmm. or the Muslim world. Again, the Jews, the Ashkenazis, exactly. Okay, and uh, inflating it to the point, making that child, okay, we're talking about here a collective psyche, okay, as a, trauma, a traumatized person to the mm -hmm. point he is blaming everybody mm -hmm. for uh, hating him or hating the Jews. Everybody's out there to get us. Therefore, whatever we do is justified. Therefore, even if we kill those uh, Guim, okay, who are expendable, it's okay because the the world let us die in Auschwitz, etc. So th this kind of uh, of of a uh, trauma uh, projected against the Jews in Palestine, especially, uh, especially, and to the world in general, especially in, in the Zionists in in Europe and the United States and Canada, etc. So it created uh, when it created a, a psychic past. Whereas when he or she is eighteen or nineteen years old, ready to join the army he or he or she already a, a zombie psychopath mm. ready to kill to yeah. kill with no mercy and and to be able to justify it to his mind and when he tried to portray it to the world comes as a as a as a joke like mm. they're sick you know it's exactly how uh they talk to the world they're yeah. talking to the world with with nonsense uh, with any merit, without uh, reason or justification, they just kill for killing, and they yeah. they live with it. Yeah. So uh, uh, the Jews, uh, the Jews, pe Jewish people uh, in 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 Palestine, in general, I would say the vast majority are are uh, are uh, as a socially sick psychopathic cult. Yes. Whereas in the world, in the West, it, it does persist, but not as 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 it is in in inside Israel itself. Whereas many Jews now are waking up in the West, in in Canada, in the United States, in Britain, France, Australia, especially in the West, I said, like they all they have the same uh, uh, statement. Where was I? I just woke up. It's just like a spill. It's like a spill on them. Like Naomi uh, Klein, he was. Mm. She was at one point. She was a Zionist, mm. and she just oh, everybody. Like when you when you listen to uh, Jewish uh, Western Jews talking about their experience with Zionism and their uh, journey to anti-Zionism, it's like it's like this. It's a wake yeah. up. Yeah. Yes, you know, because it's it's a matter of facts. You know, once they realize, you know, uh, find out what the facts are, then they go into a shock, and they realize yeah. that they've been lied to, and they don't want to be lied to, and so they so they rebel. You know, it's natural. Yeah. But you know, uh, it, and it's not only the Zionists. You know, even the Communist Party of Naomi Klein. You know, she used to be in the Communist Party. All of those, you know, they used to be Zionists. You know, until 1967, the Communist Party was pro-Zionist. Yes, I remember. When Professor uh, 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 what was his name, Danny Goldstick, oh yeah, Department I remember. of Philosophy at the University of yeah. Toronto. I remember, you know, like uh, highly placed, you know, a Communist Party member, you know, member of the Central Committee, you know, of the Communist Party. In yes. nineteen, you know, as late as nineteen eighty. When uh, I was invited to a solidarity conference in Beirut, you know, of the PLO. And there, uh, that's when I met Yasser Arafat. And I come back, you know, and I have a report to make. And he's freaking out, you know, like he's freaking out, you know, because, you know, the PLO was supposed to be a terrorist organization and he didn't want to be associated with a terrorist organization. Even though he had joined with me, you know, who was a Trotskyist at the time, you know, and he was a communist, you know, like... Nonetheless, you know, what was more powerful even than that, which he had overcome, was the PLO, and he quit. He quit on me. He never did anything else, you know, for the Palestinians, you know, uh, after that him. point. Uh, I, had, I had a conversation with him a couple of times, and, and uh, yeah, I agree with you. He, the, the, the 
the communist uh, parties across the globe yes literally were uh, zionist by association of creating this the the so-called jewish state in palestine mm. actually the the soviet union through czechoslovakia supplied the zionist uh, gangs the haganah mm. with lots of weapons to ethnically cleanse the Palestinians and fight off the Palis the Arab armies who were trying to, uh, you know, um, defend the Palestinians who are being exactly. attacked. You know, so, after uh, a year of being attacked, yeah, yeah. Yeah. the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union was actually uh, uh, pivotal and important in the creation yes. of the United States. I wouldn't say yes. it's the the pivotal one, but it was important. They actually they sent the lots of. Uh, Zionist uh, immigrants to Palestine allow them mm. to go to Palestine. So, um, mm. so yeah, the communists, the communists, the, especially the Russia, the Soviet um, communists, yes. uh, until uh, well, you know, even until now, they still believe in in the viability of the uh, Israel as a state for the Jews mm. and Palestinians should mm. have a Palestinian state on the West Bank and Gaza Strip and. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's pathetic. You know, they, they're, um, you know, it's yeah, abdication of responsibility. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. <clears throat> um, yeah. And you know, there's a lot of ex-members of the Communist Party as well who still carry <clears throat> that kind of influence. You know, like the vaunted uh, movement uh, that uh, calls for um, a one-state solution. A lot of these proponents are ex-Communist Party members who are talking about a one-state solution for the residents, the Palestinian and uh, Zionist residents of Palestine at this time, without mentioning the refugees. You know, the one-state solution that they're talking about, it's as if, you know, if the refugees don't even exist. You know, they have no provision, you know, for the for the uh, re-entry of the, the right of return of the Palestinian refugees. They don't talk about that at all. They just talk about no. a one-state solution because <clears throat> Communist Party is still, you know, caught up, you know, with this bourgeois notion of the nation state. They could never mm -hmm. escape from that notion. And that was the notion that helped to form the Zionist movement, which was actually begun by the Protestant Christians in 1835. And the Zionists, you know, jumped on that, you know, because they realized after the Dreyfus affair that assimilation was not going to work. So they had to be, you know, uh, uh, find another solution. And the solution that they decided upon was a bourgeois solution to set up, you know, a bourgeois nation state only for the Jewish people, yeah. even though they didn't even represent a majority of the Jewish people, you know, and in the thirties and forties, you know, the majority of the Jewish people supported the Jewish Bund and not the Zionists. The Zionists that's, were like 8% right. of the population. And they, they mm -hmm. made their deals with the Nazis because they thought the Nazis were going to win the war. So they made a deal, you know, to get 60,000 of their members out from Germany and 1,843 out from Hungary. They didn't have that many members, you know, the Zionists. You know, no. it was the Jewish Bund, especially in Eastern Europe, that were the revolutionary vanguard, you know, that had 38,000 members. You know, while the Communist Party of, of Lenin only had, you know, 8,000 members at the time in 1903. And yet, you know, they made a big mistake. Communist Party at that time, they expelled the Jewish Bund, you know, from the Russian Social Democratic Party. They split. The Communist Party was founded. Mm -hmm. The Jewish Bundists were told, you have to leave the Jewish Bund and join the Communist Party one at a time and be under our democratic centralist control majority. Of course, you know, being non-Jewish, without any autonomy, you know, for taking care of of the so-called Jewish question, as they called it, it was you know pathetic, you know, like reactionary set of politics that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. contributed to the uh, to the failure of the Communist Party to deal with Zionism on two planes: one in terms of you know the interest national self determination of the Palestinians, <clears throat> and two in terms of you know a solution to the national self determination of the Jewish people. They had no program for either. They failed. Well, they they well to to, to be fair to the communists, they created a, a Jewish homeland in western in eastern uh, um, Siberia. It's so <laughs> stupid. It's so stupid. Send yes. send them all the way to eastern Siberia to create a Jewish homeland. Why didn't 
you created in in uh, where the Jews, the Ashkenazi Jews, once lived and flourished and yes. been there for hundreds of years, it, like yes. which is now today is, is uh, Poland, Ukraine, and Russia. Why didn't you create the Jewish homeland there? There's lots yeah. of land, and actually there were lots of Jewish uh, towns and villages. Why yeah. didn't they create it there? Yeah. This is like out of sight, out of mind. Just send them to the border of Mongolia and China, yeah. and they just uh, they could uh, live there. Stupid, yeah. very stupid yeah. uh, by Stalin. It's actually it's a Stalinist idea. Uh, yes, it's a Stalinist then, idea, but it was initiated not by Stalin, but by uh, a member of the Communist Party uh, Politburo called uh, uh, Kalinsky. I think it was his his idea, you know, to set up the uh, Jew. He was a Jew himself. Probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just anyway. I don't want to go about the history of, of of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Back to the Palestinian issue. When on the eve of the pro proclamation of the Zionist state, it's called Israel. Israel, uh, the, the, the the Ashkenazi colonists found they don't have enough people. Even when they had over about six hundred thousand or or so, about half a million to six hundred thousand colonists over thirty years, whereas most of the Jews of Eastern Europe left to the United States and Canada and England and France. They found that they needed people. They cannot function with this very little number. So they they espoused um, a plan to bring all the Arab Jews from mm -hmm. their home, uprooting uprooting them. Mm -hmm. Well, these people did not like from 1917 till 1948. Not even one single Arab Jews went to Palestine. Mm -hmm. Of course, they recruited some of those Arab Jews to be Zionist agents, but the, the the absolute vast majority of Arab Jews they don't want to go to Palestine. Mm -hmm. They are they're happy in Morocco and Algeria and Libya, Tunisia, Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, even next door, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq. They don't want to come. They're happy, mm -hmm. even in Yemen. They create then they they enacted a, a plan. A big plan to bring all those Arab Jews. They needed people to clean the streets. They need labor. They need people to work in the kitchens, and yeah. they needed they needed those second class citizens. Yeah. So they worked with the French and the British and the British Asian uh, 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 authority to bring those Arab Jews from the Arab world when and the other, uh, you know, Muslim countries. Whereas most of all these countries were under either indirect or indirect uh, Western control. So they actually abducted, abducted those Jews either by using the terrorism as they did in, in Morocco and Egypt and uh, in Iraq, bombing synagogues, bombing Jewish homes, uh, creating, uh, you know, uh, animosities. So, uh, and those people, they had no choice but to listen to the authorities to do what you do. Because at the end of the day, you have to protect your family. Mm -hmm. So these people are being abducted, really, literally abducted from their homes. Yes. Okay, to Palestine. 800,000 Arab Jews mm -hmm. within between 1949 and 1955, they've been brought into Palestine. Mm. These Jews being treated as basically slaves, they put into uh, towns, they called it frontier towns, just yeah. created towns, okay? And they, they, it's it's known scandal within so-called Israel about abducting their own babies. It's exactly like oh, the yes. school issue in Canada. They took their ki kids, to make them more civilized, uh, Ashkenazi ways civilized. Mm. And yeah. it's, it's a big scandal in, in, in Israel about these people. They literally uh, erased their culture, their language, their roots, mm. and turned them to look alike Ashkenazis, mm. Ashkenazi culture, an Ashkenazi mm. European uh, way. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it took, of course, two or three generations in order to bring those people into at, at bar 
to the the Ashkenazi standard of who how the Jews should like and behave. Yes, yes it's it's yes. a sad situation. If anybody wants to know about uh, what happened to the Arab Jews, it should. There's lots of uh, books about them. I think uh, uh, Avi Schlein, uh, he's a uh, an Iraqi Jewish uh, historian. He he had some books about. I can't remember the name of the book. He's uh, he's from Iraq. His parents he was uh, uprooted from Iraq. He where he. Uh, He's, he lives in England. I think he is a professor of history in Oxford, I believe. Mm. He should uh, Google that and read about it. Mm. Yes. Uh, I, when I did an interview at the, uh, at the second demonstration um, after uh, October the 7th here in Montreal, uh, and uh, I spoke to, with um, the CJAD radio station, which is a pro-Zionist uh, radio station here. Yeah. TV. In Montreal, it's and and I mentioned that uh, the, you know that uh, the Zionist state was a white supremacist regime, both for the reason that it was suppressing the Palestinian nation and suppressing the Jewish Arabs. And the uh, interviewer said, "What? You know, like total shock. You know what?" And I repeated it, you know, because he gave me time, you know. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I repeated the statement. And then he cut me off. That was it, you know. <laughs> like, and then he apologized, you know, to the listeners for allowing me to have said that. <laughs> I really encourage people who see this uh, broadcast to look uh, into Avi Schlein books yes. about Arab Jews and the plight of the Arab Jews and mm -hmm. what happened to the Arab Jews and how they transferred them from uh, true Arabs who are Jews, but they are true Arabs in every uh, meaning of the world, into a look like Ashkenazi European Christians. Yeah. They transferred them by yeah. all kinds of tricks, mm. including including jailing who were against the 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 abduction. There's lots of Jews who are from Arab world, especially Iraq and uh, and uh, I think Libya, they've been jailed and they perished. They just oh. disappeared. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also the uh, the plight of the uh, uh, Yemeni babies, you know, and their parents yes. who were told that their children had died and the children exactly. were stolen and given to uh, Ashkenazi parents who were pro Zionist, yeah, of course, you know. It, they did that to the Yemenis, they did that to the Iraqis, they did that to the Moroccans. Yeah, and to the Yemenis but also. Mostly, they told them when they were boarding the plane, uh, I, I read, that they were told that the, the plane is too heavy and that uh, everybody should, all the women should give their, their jewelry, their gold jewelry, to be transported later on. And of course, you know, it was all stolen. And, uh, of course, of course. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, Israel is supposed to be receiving money from, from Germany, you know, to take care of the welfare of the uh, Holocaust survivors. Mm, and... No. Uh, somehow, one third of the Holocaust survivors are living in poverty. Yes. <laughs> all the money they don't take the care of the Holocaust survivors. Of, all the monies collected from from uh, Germany went to the coffers of the Zionist state in order to build settlements, army, uh, etc. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, <laughs> the survivors of the Holocaust are living in poverty there. Yep. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, you know, we'll let the uh, the Jewish people know about this, you know, but, you know, there's no avenue of discussion, you know, we're going to be ending soon, you know, we only have, you know, a couple of moments, you know, so we have to conclude. But the only way for me to be able to speak to the Jewish community here in Montreal was to stand at the corner in front of the Jewish community campus and talk to the Jewish people one at a time. That was the only way I could break through the censorship. And they it's couldn't important. stop me. And I was even supported, you know, by the judge, you know, Emily uh, Rivard. And and even when, you know, uh, the other groups, you know, came there and, and, and made, a, you know, a big noise and, and caused a, a, a ruckus and they were banned by an injunction, I wasn't covered by the injunction. I still kept on going there, you know, and uh, they couldn't you. stop me from maintaining the contact, you know, with the Jewish people. So, uh, you know, after my knee heals, then I'll be able to go back. And uh, I'm sure there were, uh, the Jewish community is wondering, you know, what happened to AB, you know? <laughs> <laughs>
because every argument that they had, you know, so pathetically, you know, like just a repetition of whatever they heard on television news, mainstream news, corporate news, you know, I told them, you know, the information that they, they were missing and they would listen and they would hear and they, and they accepted it, you know, because they knew that I was even more Jewish than they were, you know, so they had to listen to me. <laughs> One lady even called me a rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could you could do a good rabbi. You know lots of uh, Jewish uh, laws. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Okay, great. Okay, okay. so we're making another breakthrough uh, broadcast here. And uh, now we're going to uh, send it out. And uh, we ask all the viewers to share. Share, share, share. Okay, thank you very much for listening and for understanding. Peace to all.